Hello and welcome to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the PDGA's coverage of the 2024 PDGA Junior World Championships presented by Innova Disc Golf. This coverage is brought to you by Gatekeeper Media. I'm Nathan Johnson, joined in the booth today by Dan Brooks-Wells. How's it going, Dan? Doing really good, man. Uh, Feeling good. We got a hot one out today. It's a theme that we've been seeing recently. And you know what, man? We get to see some young guns play today. Young guns from all around the world. We have Blake Houston coming from Australia. We have Kyle Crickhouse from Hong Kong. Kenta Aranami from Japan and Ryan Mon from the good old US of A in South Carolina. As we take a look at some of the players to watch, we've got some absolute shredders in this tournament. Yeah, going to be an exciting one. And guys, we had some car trouble. We weren't able to get some drone flights for these fly throughs, but we will have them for the remainder of the tournament. But as you can see here, this is hole one. It's a par four, 653 feet. So it looks like a tight tee shot here and just make your way down the fairway. Yeah, we got Ryan Mon leading things off. He's already got one major title this year, took down the U.S. Amateur Disc Golf Championships in Toboggan earlier this year, so I'm sure he would love to follow that up with a junior world title. This one seems to get a little bit right on him. He'll be dealing with a scramble right off the bat. Kyle Crickhouse here, 986 rated. Lining up that backhand Some as well. Just really something high that rated. Little... Go ahead, Dan. Really high rated young players here. It's really impressive to see. You didn't see it back in the day. and uh, But the competition these days is just getting better and better and younger and younger. Yeah, that is for sure. Kenta Aranami, 984 rated out of Tokyo, Japan. Coming all the way to the States for this tournament. You'd love to see it. Oh, a bit of an early release. Maybe some early jitters for some of these kids. I mean, we have to remember, they are all <laughs> playing in the MJ18 division of Junior World. So, got to think they might be feeling a little nerves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this could be the first time a lot of these guys are playing on film. Um, so, there's always that added pressure, not to mention the biggest tournament of the year. Yeah, and that one is pulled as well from Blake Houston, coming from Australia, 996 rated. So some, we're going to see some scrambling early on this course. Yeah, it might, it might be a theme here, a little bit of scrambling here and there. But that is part of disc golf. See if you can scramble better than the next guy. Two good pitch out so far to get themselves back in par position in the fairway. Some thick woods on this first hole here. That one didn't look like it made it all the way out. You can see Aranami has a bit of a gap here. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, it just gets knocked down. I love that like step back standstill shot. It was looking really pure. I, I think that was thrown really well. It just happens to catch the only one to miss. Yes, yeah, so this is Houston now. Nice looking shot, but catches a late tree. It's going to leave him in a deep circle too. We'll see if he gives that a run. This is Crickhouse with the flex forehand. Catch one a little early. He'll have a C2 look at it. We're going to see what kind of confidence these guys have on the green early on here. If they're running stuff hard or, you know, trying to pace it so, so they don't run by the basket too much. I'm really interested to see how these guys decide to attack the green. Yeah, that upshot from Mon was a bit of a misrelease, so he's going to be quite a ways out to get up and down. And Aranami's shot hits early as well, so... Nobody really in position for an easy par. All these guys will have outside looks. If anything, that was a good upshot from Ryan. We'll keep his 
score out of bogey. I think this is probably just going to be a pitch up as well. Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you pitch up, obviously, make sure you're five feet and not 20 feet. It makes all the difference mentally. And we got a lot of rounds to play, so want to keep that mental energy throughout the week. Yeah, worth mentioning, this is a five and a half round tournament with a cut after round four. As we see a nice, decent bid there from Crick House, just a bit off, goes a little long. We'll have four rounds, then a cut, then a semifinal round, and then a final nine for our top four competitors. So a ton of golf coming for you guys this week, and we'll have it all on coverage coming next day on the PDGA's YouTube channel. A couple bogey putts coming up here. Houston going to be up next from about 15 feet or so. Kind of a nervy putt to, to start your world championships. There you go. That's a veteran move right there for a young kid. Make sure that basket's looking good. No need for early spits. And that might have made the difference uh, with a bit of a hot reaction <laughs> off of the pole. It does stick, though, for the bogey. So it looks like we've got ourselves a bogey frame to start the day for our feature card. Not what these guys were looking for, but I'm sure they'll be able to bounce back quickly. Absolutely, and we have... Hole two, this is a par three, 290 feet. From what the picture shows, it's looking like a pretty straight gap. We do have OB lining the right side. And Ryan Mon going with the forehand here. Looks like a mid-range or overstable putter. Just a nice soft hyzer and a very smooth release. Puts him well inside the circle. That is going to be set him up nicely to grab that bounce back birdie. Yeah, this seems to be a common play on this one. Obviously, a little bit different than what the pictures show. It does play a little left to right. So if you have the forehand, that definitely seems like the preferred play. Yeah, nicely thrown from Crickhouse too. Catches a late tree, but still should have a birdie putt from there. Oh, not what Aaron oh. was looking for there. Catches early. No, oh, and that that might be even tougher than the tee shot over there. Yeah, going to be a difficult scramble. Houston also opting for that forehand line. Goes a little bit back door, but sneaks through. Going to be twenty five feet or so long. Of the basket and yeah like you said dan this is a tough scramble got to throw some sort of flex forehand through this right side most likely yeah trusting something over stable on that anheuser and expecting it to flex back or just go left that that works too not what i was expecting <laughs> fair enough worked out yeah either way over stable disc <laughs> give All himself right. a chance here Great putt from Kyle Crickhouse. Knocks it down from just around circle's edge for his birdie. Gets him back to even. That one's got to feel good. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, like these guys starting off, these are some nervy putts. So, oh, yes. And just like that, cashing a few of them, getting the ball rolling, trying to get, you know, trying to shake those nerves out and uh, building the confidence up. Yeah, I think the uh, we can officially say these guys have moved on. I mean, there's nothing that'll settle the nerves like a bogey on the first hole of the tournament, I will say. As yeah. Blake Houston knocks down a nice putt of his own, he's going to pick up the birdie. So three birdies, one par for our card now on hole two. These guys have bounced back in a big way, and uh, I think they're ready to shred. And we are ready to see it. 
are here at hole three. This is 440 feet. I'm just gonna have to take a look at what this is gonna be because I bet you there might be some twists and turns. It's like a surprise each time, everybody. Yeah, slightly downhill on this par four, definitely attackable for the eagle. We'll see how aggressive these guys decide to get off the tee. Yeah, it looks like there's some room to work with. Just how much do you want to bite off? Yeah, it looks like Mon went with a slower disc there. This looks more like a fairway driver from Crick House. Maybe trying to get a little aggressive, but early release is that. And it's going to have some trouble. Looking a little turned out of the hand, trying to bite off a lot. Gets a really nice kick or just basically drop into the fairway. Can't be upset with that. Yeah, not a bad result at all. See what Aranami goes with. This looks like a fairway driver speed type of disc. Getting a little bit of hyzer flip. And that is cruising down the fairway. Wow. What a great shot. Turns the camera and he's got a long look at the oh, eagle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's definitely putting. I don't even know if it's that long of a look, honestly. I guess we'll see. Oh, he had a little window, but Kyle just a tad bit off. Catches a skinny tree. Does still find the fairway, so he should be able to scramble from there. But that was almost a great shot. Yeah. And this is a good position here, looking like just a nice, easy putter up and into the green. Ooh. Scares the basket a bit. Goes a little long for Houston and... Mon has a tough, tough shot here. A bit of a scramble himself, but gets through, and that is going to work out very nicely. I bet she's aiming for the fire hydrant. He's like, just don't hit it. <laughs> exactly. Just got to throw it about two and a half feet off the ground, and you should be okay. Yeah. So just a pitch up for Crickhouse. That'll be a tap in par for him coming up. And yeah, like you said, Dan, this is, I would call this an inside the circle putt for the Eagle. Yeah. Bit of a straddle has to work his way around the tree. Oh, no. Come on. Give it to him. Uh, what good a bid. great effort. Felt like that thing dangled on the rim for an hour. Yeah, a little too long for comfort. We want that one to stick next time. But I'll have to settle for the tap in birdie. This is Blake Houston now. He's got about a 25 footer or so for his birdie. Just a tad low. Just a bit low. Notice how, like, the lock isn't in the ground, so the basket's just, like, you know, four inches higher than what you're used to. Just yeah. Like weird raised. You know what I mean? Like, it's not raised, but it is a little bit. Um, this did play as the second easiest hole with six eagles. So yeah. I, think our, I think our guys are a little bit too good. You know, people are starting to throw farther. And I apologize. It's actually nine eagles. So well done. But we are over here at par, at a hole four, par three, 410 feet. Looking like a straight shot with some trees in the way. I'm sure of it. But I am curious because we got some open ground here. So it's looking like a bottleneck into this green. So got to hit a far gap. Hit a far gap or just go over the gap. Potentially, Ryan Mon just going to go spike Heiser, play the Plinko game. Doesn't quite get through. Comes up a bit short right. Is this this is this just the local route? 
this is the play just Maybe. over everything. I mean, if you can do it, right? I guess when you're 17 or 18 years old and can throw the disc a mile, why not? Look at that oh, height. Goodness. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what do we know, Dan? I mean, th this is these kids are just absolutely know. blasting discs into the air. Just hammer it. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, obviously this is the play. Why did he even give you a gap down the middle? Yeah, this is this is the kind of good peer pressure. Like, you see one guy do it, and you're like, yeah. oh, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Got to give it a send. Crickhouse is following them up top. That one does get through very nicely. Going to give oh, him yeah. a birdie look from Circle's Edge. Yeah, absolutely solid. Yeah, it's going to be four for four over the top. Well, I love to see it. Love to see them all be able to do it. Or at least all try to do it. Let's see what Blake Houston can do that one was boom. smoked. Boom did a boom. And yeah, that was like, pure, that was like as well. Yeah, that was like Heiser. Like that wasn't even a flex. Just kinda hyzered all the way. Pretty awesome to see. So a long, probably just a pitch up here. Yep, no reason to run that downhill putt is it up for par this is a kind of a tricky scramble for ryan mon over here on the right he kind of throws it a little low might have got a skip not, not really he's got a long yeah. look for par now and yeah that's gonna be a bogey that needs to sit down that kind of got a little jump on it Already look for a creek house. A little right Man. doesn't quite get it to stick. <sighs> These baskets have not been kind so far. Let's see if they act a little bit better later on. Yeah, Houston now missed the last one a little low. Makes a nice correction high in the chains. That's a great birdie for him to pick up. Gets him first on our card under par. Yeah, you, like you said, this is actually even a tester here. Kind of caught up underneath the tree. Yeah, he's like he's like under the branches enough just to make it a little annoying, you know? Just like something in the back of your mind. So fighting through that and able to knock it down, though. It's nice to be able to have confidence to knock those down, you know, because then it, it allows you to run those longer ones um, before it. So for, for all you guys thinking, you know, I, I have to practice all my 40 and 50 footers to make them. It's really important to actually practice your 20 footers so that you're not even scared of a comebacker. Here we are at hole five. This is a par four, 420 feet dog leg to the left. Definitely got some woods to work with here. OB behind the basket looking like a creek. Yeah, a couple of gaps to choose from off the tee. We'll see which way our players decide to go. The right one looking a little bigger, at least from this angle. Yes, yeah, is looking uphill as well. So maybe a little slippage off the tee. Yeah, hard to tell. Maybe just a misrelease. Pulled that one a bit for Houston and He's going to be scrambling early. Aranami now. Going for the same gap. Throws it well. Catches some of those trees at the top of the hill, but got through most of the way. That'll play from there. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to get like a big flare skip off the hill. Um my guess is, is that when you get to the top, you'll have a shot in no matter what. So that is key number one. This one left a little high, catches some cabbage up top, and it kind of like boomerangs it back down to the left. 
yeah, tough reaction there for Crick House. That's just going to be on that left side rough as well. Ryan Mon looking to bounce back after the bogey. That is well thrown. He's up at the top of the hill as well. Yeah, pretty smooth there. Looking like he was a little inside. He has to take this inside gap to try and get to the pin. Yeah, just doesn't quite hit it. Kirkhouse just having to pitch out. Nothing really else to do right here. And you know what? I, I love to see it, you know. Uh, you, you would think a lot of young guns would want to try and make, like, magic happen. But sometimes you just got to do the smart play and pitch out. Good discipline. This is a well-thrown shot from Aranami. Going to be a bit below the basket coming back uphill. It's the putt you want. Is he going up and over again? Yeah, is that what he's looking at? Where'd he go? Comes up a bit short. Probably going to be a long putt, if anything. Most likely just a pitch up. Nice looking shot from Ryan Mon as well. Catches a rock there to keep him on the hill right around 25, 30 feet or so. Yeah, probably a pretty fortunate rock. He's looking like he's lining up. Yeah, just like a jump putt. Following it down. Yeah, worked out. I don't think this is a putt that... Uh, Houston should be running, but maybe, maybe but, not. <laughs> but he might, he might do hey, it. I would love the highlight. I would love the highlight. Let's see. Nah, just a pitch up. Smart, smart play. All right, I got excited, but he did the right thing. So uphill birdie look for Aranami now. Oh man, come on. I mean, maybe a little less, but uh, that's one of those. I think if he's, if he's putting on flat ground, it sticks. But uh, for some reason, putting uphill baskets do not catch like they do normally, and that's just a, that's a tough break. Baskets are picky. What can you say? Just a little low there from Mon. Definitely wants that one back, but at least it sits and he can just tap it in from there. And this is for his par. This is for Kyle's par right here. It'd be a good scramble. Yeah, fires it in there nicely. Good confident putt. Yeah, nice solid, solid stroke. So nobody really off to a, a hot start on our card, but obviously the tournament is young. But this is hole six. This is a par three, 290 feet. And what do you know? We're going over the top. <laughs> yeah, if you got it, might as well, I guess. Uh, the fairway in the sky is what these guys are looking at. Dave, I hope you got your helmet on for this one. These are coming down quick. That one comes up a bit short for Aranami. Going to have a long look. All right, good. I'm glad we finally get to see somebody take yeah. the actual fairway. Yeah. The way the hole is designed to be played, I mean, more power to you if you can throw way over. Looking like it had a decent angle on it. Does catch a tree on the left side and kick right. That looks like it's trouble over there. Yeah, not where you want to be for Kyle. We'll see what he's able to do with that. Mon is going to opt for that little baby flex forehand as well. It's on a good angle. Good shot. Good shot. Yeah, not bad. 
I think he wanted a little bit more turn out of that. But he will be putting for his bird. And yeah, I think Blake Houston looking to go up and over again. Got some really great power, so might as well take advantage of it. And that is perfectly oh, yeah. thrown Spike Heiser. I think if I'm the yeah, course designer watching this coverage, I need to add a couple uh, Mandos to this course because these kids are making it look way yeah. too easy. Yeah. Not a bad pitch off a Crick House. going to yeah. have about a 25-footer to save the par from there. Some quick putts slightly downhill for these two guys. Aranami up first. Going to give it a go. Just a hey, bit good. off. Yeah, it was that was a good pace though. Good floaty bit. He wasn't, you know, that's th that's not going to run by the basket too much. Here is Mon for his birdie. Uh, he kind of knew it out of his hand, and that is the second one in a row that he has left short. Good putt from Crickhouse. Good save. Yeah, I'm wondering if Ryan's feeling the nerves a little bit. I mean, especially coming off the last AM World title win. He's the highest rated player in the field. I'm sure he's got lofty goals for himself. That can be uh, you know, tough to manage when you're thrown on the, the feature card in round one at a, at a huge event like this. Yeah, for sure. I'm not sure what you can do to calm the nerves besides just try and take yourself out of the situation in the sense of like, it's just another day, just another tournament and try and um, almost lie to yourself and downplay it. But I'm sure we will see him pick it up here. And there's a good solid birdie by Houston with a nice up and over the top shot. We are at hole seven, par three, 300 feet on the dot. Looking like a little S curve, left to right, right to left at the end. Now we can see the hole is uphill. I don't think there's really any going over the top on this one. You gotta work your way through the fairway here. Yep, the only way is through Blake Houston, gonna be up first after a nice birdie on the last hole. Late release there drops him down off the fairway. None of these guys have seemingly been able to get into a nice rhythm. We've seen a lot of early, early tree kicks on these wooded holes causing some trouble. Yeah, it, it just takes a you know two or three good holes to get yourself rolling though. So these guys have the skill as Arnami shows us there, going get, getting way up the fairway. Crickhouse now looking at that same right side gap, just kind of pushing Heiser. Oh, he early or late mm -hmm. releases as well. Catches that same tree. Common miss when you're throwing uphill. A lot of players tend to hold on to that disc a little longer. With a bit higher release point. See if Ryan can make the correction. Yeah, I think so. Ah, uh, just sneaks inside a little bit too much and catches one in there. And Arnami, the only one to make it all the way through. Houston looking like he has a pretty difficult lie here, like a step back. Ooh, look at that. Look at the amount of hyzer he put on that one. Yeah, that was a very overstable disc. I don't – maybe even threw it upside down. I could not tell, but it was a very interesting flight. We'll see how it ended up for him. Yeah. Didn't seem like he got all the way through like he wanted. Kirkhouse is 
lining up a little bit of a standstill backhand. This course really seems to call for a lot of standstill shots, especially if you... Oh, no. I was going to say, if you do not stay in the fairway, but it's like a secondary skill to have. There are some players I know who literally can't, who will not stand still. They will take a step or two if they have any sort of room at all. Kirkhouse looking like he got a decent way up the fairway, but going to be a challenging putt to save his bogey. Yeah, we'll see if he's even able to run it from there. Good pitch up from Ryan Mon. Get some nice ground play to sneak him inside the circle to save his par. And this is where Blake Houston ended up after his second shot. So this is a long par putt coming up slightly downhill as well behind the basket. So he's got to be careful. I like I like the bid, you know, confident in himself. Going to leave himself a little bit of a tester coming back. And a nice smooth spin putt from Aranami just a bit low. Catches the cage. This is a bogey putt for Crickhouse. Does have a window. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, wow, just like rocketing a spinner in there, trying to get all the distance he needs. Again, I, I love his confident bids um, because it just gives him the opportunity to have a high percentage make as we see a nice make by Mon there, good good scramble. Um, and, but then Kirkhouse is, it has the confidence to make this comebacker as well. Yeah, about 20 feet left now. Or a double bogey, unfortunately, does knock it down. And uh, this is a bogey putt for Houston as well. So nobody going to be under par anymore after this hole. A good putt there, though. Yeah, it definitely holds the score on out here. But again, always a little nervy, especially in the first round. But we are on hole eight. This is a par three, 360 feet. Looking like another uphill shot. Seems to be a theme here. Tight wooded uphill. Aranami lining up a slight turnover. This one is pulled out of the hand, though. Catches early again. And it's going to be a near impossible scramble, I think, from depending on where it kicked to. These guys are opting for the backhand, which probably means you need like this slow turning glide. Kind of just like that. And that basket is way up there. Yeah, this is a demanding shot for sure. It was well thrown from Mon. Just needed to miss that one tree at the end that he caught. It's going to leave him in circle two. This is an oh. early release from Houston. Catches and kicks left. Yeah. And I bet, I bet that happens a lot. You just got to like... You just got to try and rip one through this gap, and there's a certain percentage where you're going to hit one of these trees, and probably a common mistake. Yeah, that one was a bit pulled from Kirkhouse. He's going to be scrambling as well. Houston just going to try to get any sort of look from down here. Not a bad shot, but... Still quite a bit of meat left on the bone. So, probably the smallest gap 
to hit. Unfortunately, is not able to hit it, but we'll see what he is left with. It's probably pretty tough from there as well. But here is Kirkhouse. Looking like a forehand flex up this hill. Pretty good. Yeah, good result. Going to have a, a putt at it from there. Tight window for Aranami. You can see what he's looking at from the other side. Very well thrown. That's a great scramble shot from there to limit his damage to just a single bogey. It's a long par look for Houston. God, it doesn't get it turned out of the hand. Mm -hmm. So here we are. This is a birdie look here for Mon. Looking 45-ish feet up this hill. I just can't Man. quite get it going. A little low again. So what do you do? I mean, this, see, see, that's happened to all of us where we're just we just can't find the shot above the rim. When you get into that that unfortunate flow, that habit, what do you do to try and get over that? What's something you're telling yourself? I think a lot of people would like to just aim higher, but. Uh, I Personally, I find that when I miss low, it means I'm not getting enough spin on the putt. Um, so I try to really make sure that I'm popping it with the wrist, and give that putt a little bit more glide, and uh, try to get it there. Yeah, I like that. I believe that is the. I agree with you pretty much, hundred percent. Moving on to hole nine. This is a par four, 520 feet, dog leg right. So tight shot, looking like a low ceiling off the tee. And you're gonna wanna get yourself completely out this gap to be able to approach the pin. Nice smooth forehand from Mon. This fades out a bit early, but makes enough progress that he should be able to make that work from the tall grass over there. We got two for two on the forehand. Yeah, well thrown from Ooh. Crickhouse gets him in the middle. Yeah. Little good skip out the gap here. Now with the backhand, you got to be careful because there is a little bit of OB on this left side, so you you got to keep it turning or at least straight out this gap. And this is in danger. Yeah, finds that tall stuff over there. Not what he was looking for. Caught a branch about halfway through the flight. This is looking much better from Houston. Nice, low, committed release. And hits the fairway. Yeah, so see, if you just get out that gap at all, it's pretty much just a chip shot into this pin. Yeah, and that does sit down eventually for Crickhouse. Going to be very close to tap in his birdie. Guys like that nice little touch forehand for the approach, something overstable. Looking good for Houston as well. Leaks a little long, but stays in bounds. And this is where Aranami crossed into out of bounds. Very smooth, Aranami, very smooth player. That one gets a little deep and there is a white painted line. I'm not sure if that is in play. Yeah, I think he did find the out of bounds again, unfortunately. Not the mistake you want to make on this hole. Yeah, as you see, can see, he is taking his relief. So this is going to be for his double bogey five. Or, er, I'm sorry, bogey five. Yes. Yeah, tough break on one of the softer holes we've seen so far. All three of our other players 
very close for birdie. And hole nine. Did play in the middle of the pack at a 3.81 average, but we did see an eagle giving a shout out Ooh. to Nikolai Hagen with the two. That is pretty cool to see. Very nice, congrats. Wrapping up our front nine, a bit of a slow start for our feature card, Ryan Mon leading the way at one under par. We actually got ourselves a small straight one under even, one over and two over. As we take a look at the rest of the leaderboard, Patrick Yu Whoa. coming out the gate hot, 11 under par, Keegan hopped at 10 under. We'll see if our guys on the feature card can break into that top 10 here after round one. Make sure to tune into the back nine. We'll have some more coverage coming for you right up.